buddy. Let me show you to everybody, son. Here's my buddy, my little boy. Woo! This is Corbin Bragg. He's an Appalachian boy. He was named after his uh, great great grandpa Bragg, at least his middle name. Um, we really love him. We are going to talk about fall blooms today. I'm going to show you around our property. I'm going to show you what's blooming on, on our property. And then I'm going to take you off property to some other places and show you what else is blooming. Um, a lot of honey, um, I guess beekeepers, a, a lot of beekeepers get a spring harvest <clears throat> and a summer harvest. But the fall harvest, I think, is underappreciated sometimes. And if you live in a place where you have a great fall bloom, you can maybe get a fall harvest, right, bud? Yeah, yeah maybe. Um, where we live in western North Carolina is about 3,000 feet in the mountains. We get a lot of rain. And sometimes I have just an amazing fall nectar flow. I've gotten fall honey the last two years. I still may this year. Um, with the baby here, things have gotten a little bit busy, but even if you, um, don't get a fall harvest, that fall flow is really important to build up your bees, um, is their last pollen source, their last nectar source, and it can really help your bees get through winter, even if you're not doing a harvest, even if that honey that they're making is strictly for the honeybees, um, now, some of these plants I'm going to show you are natives to my area and most of the East Coast. Um, some of these plants are ornamentals and some of them are, are classified as invasives like Japanese knotweed. Yeah, Japanese knotweed. Um, I don't recommend planting invasives, but let's be honest, if you live near them, your bees are going to be getting a nectar source from those invasive plants as well. Um, this is important too, I think, to keep in mind with honeybees. Oh, bud. Is that honeybees um, are not host specific. They are a generalist feeder, which means they'll go to a lot of different types of, of uh, blooms and plants throughout the year. It's kind of like us humans. Um, we don't want a salad every night. Um, we don't want a hamburger every night or pasta every night. We like variety. Same thing with the bees. So even if you have these plants on your property and you don't see honeybees on them, that probably just means that there's something that they like a little bit more that's also blooming. But you could have another beekeeper a few miles away that is missing that um, preferred nectar source and they may love that plant. And even if your honeybees don't like the, these nectar sources, other native pollinators because honeybees aren't native there's lots of native pollinators that probably will and that's going to lessen the competition for your honeybees um, the more fall blooms we have in my opinion the better because that spreads out where the nectar finders are going where the pollinators are going and that just gives your bees you know more opportunity in my opinion now a lot of flowers bloom in the spring and summer but those fall flowers have evolved to bloom in the fall so they have less competition so there's not as many flowers blooming especially native flowers but they are around it's just you have to know where to find them to recognize them now i know everybody doesn't live in the same type of habitat as i do in western north carolina in the mountains we live in an area most similar um, it's about 3,000 feet high, um, zone 6B, 6A in that area. Um, so there's a good part of America that can be similar, like Pennsylvania, southern New York, things like that. Um, but I think what's important is to just appreciate those fall blooms because that really can help your bees out. So what I'm going to show you real quick, this is your first one. Hydrangea. Bees really, really love hydrangea. I mean, they go crazy for it. Um, later in this video, I'm going to show you um, this hydrangea bush I found. And there were so many pollinators on it. I mean, 15, 20 different species of insects. It was pretty cool. 
So uh, let's take a little tour, starting on our farm, and then we're gonna go off property, and I'm gonna try to show you um, some of these fall blooms. Let's get to it. Right back. Oh. So we're gonna walk around, look at some fall blooms on the farm. We're about to pass my honeybees here. Um, but like I said, these blooms aren't just for your honeybees. They're for native bees, other pollinators. Uh, most of my IDs should be correct, hopefully. I know there's one that I got wrong that I filmed earlier that I'll talk about. Um, but that's one of the things with beekeeping is that you eventually become a botanist as well. Um, and I guess keep in mind, you live in a different place than I do. Some of these plants might be invasive in your area. So always do your research. Uh, don't just listen to what someone says on YouTube, people. Use that as some, you know, starting point and then go from there. And um, if you're not sure what blooms in your area, what I suggest is going to the parks in your area, the libraries, um, city-owned property, county-owned property, banks, um, and see what type of landscaping they have going on. A lot of parks for cities, they try to have lots of plants blooming throughout the year. So that's a great place to start. You can also drive around, stop on the edge of a highway, see what weeds are growing in a ditch. Some of those are going to be invasive, but a lot of those are actually going to be native plants probably too, I bet. So as we tour and look at some flowers, just keep in mind that uh, we don't all live in the same place, but a lot of these flowers, I bet, grow in your area. There's our turkeys. Turkey, 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 turkey. Here's my beehive. They're starting to get that smell that tells me that the goldenrod is starting. I love goldenrod honey. Some people don't, but uh, I think it is delicious. So we'll be uh, pointing out some goldenrod for sure. Right there by my, my beehive actually is a great plant to talk about. That's aster. This is, for where I live, this is definitely a fall blooming plant. It's just now starting here and it will probably go until October. So that's a great nectar source. Probably that and goldenrod are the last um, plants that bloom here during the year. Now, if you have a garden, uh, you may have some blooms in your garden as well. So I guess don't take those uh, not into account. But most people's gardens are not going to be big enough to, you know, support a beehive. But, you know, that's always a resource. Um, even right here by this beehive, you can see the purple clover. Uh, we also have white clover on my property that we'll probably see. Clover is a great all-around flower for bees. Where I'm at, it blooms... Uh, really like seven months a year so it's always nice to mix some clover in if you can hey buddy look at our pigs they were hanging out in the mud hey buds these are our mini pigs here we're actually in the pig pen this is about a half acre and it's all fenced in Looks like a jungle right now, but there's all these uh, wildflowers that are starting to bloom. So let's take a closer look. So as I'm walking, some of these weeds are taller than me and uh, I'm at least five feet tall. So uh, again, a weed is just a weed if you don't want it growing there. And I don't mind if some weeds grow in certain places on the farm. And what you can see behind me, you can see thistle and pokeberry, which is a native for sure. 
and there's actually flowers right now on the pokeberries. So there's pollinators that are going after that. The thistle, there's pollinators going. Um, I see some beetles on it. Um, the important thing to remember, if it has a flower, there is a pollinator attracted to it. Um, so even if it isn't your honeybees, like I said earlier in this video, you're spreading out the competition so that your honeybees are able to have access to more fall flowers. So as long as it's not invasive, and I know I have some invasives on my property, uh, but as long as it's not invasive, then uh, I would plant it if you have the room, and that's just gonna help your fall, your, your, your fall bees, really. Thistle, thistle. Sure, this is just bull thistle, or at least that's what I call it. Um, I don't really see a lot of honeybees on it, but I do see other pollinators on it spreading out that love. And there's plenty of bull thistle this year here growing. And then, like I said, we got pokeberry, which has very small flowers. And it's like pokeberry is interesting, I think, because on one plant, you can see every part of the plant in, in uh, you know, different stages. So there'll be full ripe berries, there'll be green berries, small berries, there'll be flowers. So it kind of goes in stages. So I, I think that's cool. So let's check out this uh, pokeberry plant. Nice little blooms there. And literally right below here, we got jewelweed. Now, with jewelweed, if you know anything about jewelweed, um, it helps take away the sting from uh, stinging nettle, helps with poison ivy. Um, and this is definitely a flower that's evolved for larger bees to get inside, bumblebees. Um, but we have a lot of jewelweed. Let me just show you, maybe. This is all jewelweed right here. So jewelweed, 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 jewelweed bull thistle, pokeberry, bull thistle, and more jewelweed right there. And actually there's a plant that, I don't know if I've seen it on my farm before or not. Um, it might just be because it's been so wet. Uh, this is a little marsh creek basically that a lot of the, the summers is dry, but with all of this, uh, wet rain i'm not surprised that there are some other uh flowers growing that i don't see as often i'm gonna look this one up real quick um most of these flowers i already know but off the top of my head i don't know this one so i'm gonna figure it out and i'll tell you in two seconds so like i said i know a lot of plants but i'm not gonna pretend that i know every single plant um, this, I guess, is just a cardinal flower. Um, I just don't remember seeing it on the property before. I guess hummingbirds really like it. Um, I'm sure there are some bees that do a little pollination on it. Um, that's a beautiful little plant. And this is cool because this is all in our pig pen for the mini pigs. So even though it's where the pigs live, it's multi-purpose. Um, we find frogs in here, turtles, uh, and it's a pollinator garden, so that's pretty cool to me. This was actually the edge of the woods when we moved in, and I cut down a lot of trees to make this a uh, semi-pasture of sorts. And then I use the trees mainly for firewood. Uh, so this yellow flower, I believe is called a wing stem. And you can see a honeybee right there. Most likely one of my honeybees. She's getting pollen and nectar. 
all the good stuff. So we have a lot of this wing stem and it's definitely in my area, it's a fall blooming plant for sure. So lots of wing stem. It's just starting up here again and back on the hill, there's definitely more. I'm trying to look for the plant we all know and love for fall that bees love and that's goldenrod. So I know there's some goldenrod on the other side of these bushes here. I just got to show it to you. So even though it's late, it's, it's seven o'clock here. Um, so a lot of the bees have stopped foraging or they're getting done, but I'm still seeing several species. Uh, there's honeybees that are on this jewelweed. So if you thought honeybees did not like jewelweed, you are, are wrong because I see them right now. Um, I know it's hard to get it on camera sometimes, but I just saw three honeybees right around here landing, going inside this flower. So, oh, there's one right there. You can maybe see a little bee. You might be a bee coming out of there in a minute. And there she is. So right here is a ground cherry plant. And I've mowed this down a couple times and it keeps coming back and that's okay. Um, I'm gonna eat some of these. I've never tried them before, but as you can see, there's flowers still growing on this ground cherry plant. Um, I haven't seen bees on the ground cherry, but there's definitely something pollinating it because it's turning into seed, right? Um, these seed pods can't go into a seed if those flowers haven't been pollinated by something. Right over here next to Teddy, I think this is Virginia knotweed, and it is um, not fun to have. It's on the edge of our woods here. <laughs> But it is a native plant, but it is pretty aggressive. But lots of pollinators enjoy this Virginia knotweed that I don't, but the pollinators do. I think this is just uh, Queen Anne's lace, I think. And over here, we got the start of goldenrod. So thank God for goldenrod because that is, for me, the number one bloom that really gets my bees through the fall. It helps them build up their stores, lots of fall honey. Um, the goldenrod is just coming in here. Um, can't see much of it over there, but past those bushes, there's a whole field of goldenrod. In a couple of weeks, this whole forest edge is just going to be yellow. And that's going to be goldenrod. So again, this is just the, the start of the fall season. So we got a lot to go because it's it's only September. It's, it's basically, when this video is published, it's going to be probably September 2nd or 3rd. And right now it's like August 29th or 28th. So we're basically in September. Um, there's more ground cherries. Uh, there's some chicory, I believe. So yet another uh, flower for the bees. There's some asters. I wanna go up and look for some Joe Pie weed. So we're gonna go up to the top of the pasture so I can show you Joe Pie weed. We even have some uh, late blooming daisies there. But hey, they're here and it's almost fall. It looks like we got some honeysuckle growing even. Some morning glories. There's a morning glory right there. Yeah, there's honeysuckle. I think that's heal all, I believe. So we got some of that growing. What else do we got? I think this is heal all. Uh, 
grown right there. And looks like we got the last of some uh, black eyed Susans. So even these wildflowers that flower in the summer, some of them are still hanging on and they're making that fall transition. Okay, here's some more uh, of the morning glories. And this is our back pasture, which is uh, weedy. It needs some work, but it's good for the bees. So we're walking up to the Joe Pie weed. Joe Pie, Joe Pie, Joe Pie. Come on, Joe Pie weed. Here we go, here we go. There's Joe Pie weed. I don't know the story behind it, why it's called Joe Pie weed. But, I'll tell you this, uh, butterflies love, oh my gosh, look, that's a, a bee moth, oh my gosh. I don't know if we got that on camera, people. That was a bee moth mimic. That was awesome. I don't know if we got that on camera. But that was pretty cool. Maybe it'll come back. So here's a Joe Pie weed. Lots of butterflies enjoy the old Joe Pie weed. Here's a close up of the goldenrod. There's one more fall plant that I want to show you that's on our property. And then we're going to go off property to see what else is blooming in our area. Joe Pie weed. So the last plant I'm showing you on our property, oh look, there's a dandelion. So hey, maybe there's a few dandelions. Put that on the list. This here is ironweed. At least, at least that's what I call it, ironweed. I like this plant, it's, it's beautiful. Um, again, just another fall blooming wildflower that helps your bees get through to the winter, helps native pollinators store up for the winter. I left this patch in my field because there's some blackberries uh, and there's a, an elderberry bush here. So this is like a little mini habitat. I know this whole field's overgrown, but this I, I left this on purpose because of the elderberry. So uh, I guess because of that, it's also a habitat for heel all, for blackberry, for goldenrods coming up, and this ironweed, which I think is beautiful. So, like I said, that's all the, well, it probably is in all of the native plants blooming right now that I could find. But we're going to head off the farm and just drive around and uh, see what we can find. I am in the big city now. I got to be loud because I'm next to a highway. But I'm going to show you another great source of nectar for your honeybees. And it's an invasive species. It's Japanese knotweed. Most of the other time, invasive species are not good overall, but this is still a great nectar source for your honeybees. I do not recommend planting it, but if you live near a place that has Japanese knotweed, your bees are probably using that nectar source. So let's go ahead and check it out. There's a bee right there. The proof is in the pudding, Japanese knotweed. I would not plant it, but again, there's definitely bees all around here. It's not something to plant, but lots of disturbed areas will have Japanese knotweed. And the bees love it. Okay, this is a crepe myrtle. Again, I don't see any bees on it, but it's blooming in September. This is a tree that actually blooms in late August, September. Some places it is invasive, um, but it has great blooms and pollinators. If there's flowers, there's going to be pollinators. We are down by another busy road off our property. But I wanted to show you another great plant, Rosa Sharon. We actually have one small bush that I transplanted um, 
to our property but rosa sharon is another great fall blooming plant it starts to bloom in mid-august and will go until september because it's almost september now probably mid-september and it comes in all different colors and lots of insects love rosa sharon plus it's my mom's name so you know i kind of like it i'm planning on planting a lot more rosa sharon on my property just because i think it's such a great bush but let's check it out Ooh, I just saw a honeybee, and it was probably one of my honeybees because this is semi-close to my house. Literally just right there, there was a honeybee that landed. So uh, that is proof to me that bees like Rosa Sharon. Here's just more Rosa Sharon, but it's uh, the white flowers. But I think it's worth taking a look just to look at a different variety. And I see honeybees. I'm going to try to get a honeybee on film showing you that honeybees like Rosa Sharon. There's a honeybee right there, people. Probably one of mine. So again, Rosa Sharon. I'm going to be planting a lot more of these. This is a great supplemental fall bush that bees love or at least will use for the fall and it will keep them high in honey hopefully high in honey is always a goal Again, I gotta be a little loud because I'm near a busy road, not on the farm, but I was driving by this area and there's a cool restoration in place, these yellow flowers. I see some Queen Anne lace, some Joe Pye weed, some greenhead sunflower, and then this yellow flower that I don't know what it is, but let's check it out. some sort of uh, restoration so all of those flowers I'm not sure what they are I do see some green head sunflower like I said but I'm not exactly sure what is planted here but it looks beautiful another great fall blooming bush there's bees and other pollinators all over this bush they're going crazy this is hydrangea it smells great i mean there are, are bees and wasps and beetles insects all over this bush i mean it is crazy um we do have some of these on our property but they're kind of in the shade and they don't really bloom as great as they should i mean there's probably 15 20 different species of insects on this hydrangea it's insane I'm gonna film it, see if you can see anything. I mean, it is impressive, it's pretty cool. So let's check it out. 